كنت فاكر إحساس الوحدة ممكن يقتل واللي فاكر إن الضعف ممكن يهزم كنت بحلم بالأمل سر الحكاية about uh, the sixth job in uh, uh, 2014. And one of my uh, colleagues here, he asked me uh, uh, disregard the Arabic title and be committed yourself to the English title. Uh, so it's going to depend upon the definition of uh, sex. Uh, according to According to uh, Harvard Business Review, which is a very respected uh, journal in man management and uh, uh, in business, uh, data scientists is going to be the sexiest job on the, not only 2014, but uh, of the 21st century. And by uh, sexy, they meant uh, very attractive to the labor market, highest paid job, and highly needed job uh, for uh, 2014. Uh, the Arabic title uh, is related to Shakespeare. Uh, this is his uh, famous uh, play, uh, Taming the Shrew, uh, Taming of the Shrew. Uh, actually, what uh, any uh, data scientist is going to do is uh, the taming of the data. Uh, and this is exactly what the data scientist is going to, de to uh, make with big data. Uh, my professor uh, and my mentor, uh, Professor Mahmoud Fathallah, uh, he is uh, uh, a leading person and authority in OBGYN. Uh, actually, he was the president of the uh, International Federation of Obstetrician and uh, gynecologist uh, put a very famous quote that statistics don't bleed, but patients do bleed. So actually statistics are emotionless, but patients suffer. This is what we are going to focus during talking about the uh, big data. Uh, we are going to try to make data bleed, feel. Okay, so we are going to try to eliminate uh, or at least minimize the patient's suffering. Ustaz Agyal Kibira Giddan fi Tub fi Masr al Ustaz Dr. Hussein Mwafi, Loh quote, I'm going to use Arabic uh, statements from time to time. Loh Kelma Shahira Giddan. للدكاترة وتلامذته بيقول بيقول لهم أنت كده كده هيموت منك عيان يا أخي بس لو أنت مذاكر كويس ومات منك عيان فده قتل خطأ أما لو أنت مش مذاكر ومات منك عيان فده قتل عمد يعني الدكاترة بيموتوا العيانين بس ممكن يبقى قتل خطأ أو قتل عمد through big data, we are going to uh, say بمشيئة الله إحنا مش عايزين يموت منا عيانين. ويمكن هنيجي نلاقي فيه uh, uh, insight أقوى للآية الكريمة وكل شيء أحصيناه كتابة. هنلاقي in US a only 2% of the people with cancer participate clinical trials. So if we are going to talk about patients as an iceberg, 
So we have here these patients involved in clinical trials, and we have 98% of the patient's data not touched at all. This is the target of the big data. Usually, uh, the concept of clinical trials and big data are kind of integration. The clinical trial, we are going to put a hypothesis, an assumption that such a drug may improve the uh, case of the patient or reduce the suffering. So we are going to put the assumption and then collect data. In big data, we are going to do uh, the opposite. We have huge amount of data and we are going to use artificial intelligence to analyze it and to reach some conclusions from such data. So here, big data, we already have data and we invest such data to solve a problem. While in clinical trials, we have a problem and we put a hypothesis, then we are going to collect data. They are integrating the uh, efforts for the benefit of the patients. Usually in clinical trials, sample size is small, uh, tens, hundreds, or even few thousands, but in big data, maybe we are talking about sample size of millions. Believe it or not, 90% of the data in the world, in the globe, has been generated only in the, the last two years. This is why some scientists classified history into two areas or two uh, phases, before big data and after Maybe most of us familiar with Lord Kelvin and his very famous statement, usually repeated many times by Dr. Sharif, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. This is really wisdom is timeless. But actually now we have a different problem. We have a dilemma when you cannot manage what you can measure. So now we are measuring so many uh, uh, standards and phenomena, but we cannot use it to, uh, for decision making. Uh, Professor Clinton Christensen is a landmark in the world uh, with his concept in disruptive uh, innovation. Uh, what is disruptive innovation? Maybe most of us are familiar with such example. Years ago, we used to use a uh, floppy desk. Then a lot of improvement regarding the capacity of the uh, floppy desk, uh, both sides, etc. This is still improvement. But disruptive innovation is to have CD. And we have a lot of improvements uh, regarding the CD to be read, then read write, then both sides for storage, etc. Then we have the portable hard disk, then we move to USB. This is a kind of not improvement of the same product, actually, this is disruptive innovation. Then now we have uh, clouds. Uh, actually, big data and the cloud computing really a kind of disruptive innovation uh, in the last few years. Uh, we are going to talk about the big data, the big D, and the capital C, by C definitely I uh, mean cancer, where among my colleagues and professors uh, uh, in oncology, uh, I'm fully aware I wouldn't be able to talk anything uh, related to oncology. I'm going for any questions related to uh, cancer. Uh, I uh, ask the permission of Dr. Sharif to uh, respond to it. Uh, 
Uh, actually, just a few months ago, despite considerable progress in prevention and treatment of cancer, cancer remains the second leading cause of death in U.S. Not that, but even with the 50 billion pharmaceutical companies spent on research and development every year, any given cancer drug is ineffective in 75% of the patient receiving it. And this is according to a statistic very few months ago. So what is big data or big D? Big in English dictionary means huge, large, sizable, jumbo, massive. Data is a plural of datum. As the people of IT saying, usually data is unprocessed information. But actually big data is a kind of misleading name. Actually, we are talking about so many aspects in data. But three V's are very important when talking about big data. Variety. By variety, we mean that we have so many different structures and formats of data between different hospitals, between Ministry of Health and Health Insurance Organization. Maybe even within the same hospital, we have the res registration format different from the medical record, maybe different from uh, a format in the operating theater. So we have variety of data, and this is a very important challenge in dealing with big data, which is uh, structured of the data. The second is the origin of the name, which is the volume of data. And we are going to talk soon about the units and the measures of uh, uh, measuring the data. And the third one is very tough and very sophisticated. We are not dealing as in clinical trials with, statist with static data. We are talking about dynamic data, a kind of stream flow. Every second there is endless number of data entering into the system. So we have three Vs, very important in understanding the concept of big data, vol volume, variety, and uh, velocity. Um, not only that, but we have also uh, other Vs, something like validity of the data, value, if you are going to pay to have such data, Veracity, which is reliability of the data, accuracy, and also to what extent the data are uh, corrupted. When talking about the measuring units for data, for example, for weight, we are talking about microgram, milligram, kilogram, etc. For time, we talk about milliseconds, weeks, decades, centuries for distance, centimeter, meter, kilometer. What are the units for data, to measure data? The people of the IT put it in a very binary system, zero and ones, or zeros and ones, on and off, black and white. And the unit is bytes, which is eight bits. 10 bytes usually is a, a storage for a single word. We have a kilobyte, maybe we use it in uh, uh, saving files. Uh, so something like uh, 100 kilobytes, usually this is a size for a low resolution photograph. We have megabytes, which is, uh, for example, um, um, the complete works of Shakespeare. They put it in a CD5 megabytes. Uh, mammography, usually it's going to take 50 megabytes for one uh, mammogram. Then we have the gigabytes, 
and usually we are going to increase by three zeros. So here one followed by nine zeros, okay? Uh, actually a floor of academic journals uh, can be stored in 100 gigabyte. Uh, a floor of books can be 50 gigabytes. Then nowadays we are talking about terabytes, which is one followed by 12 zeros. Uh, actually, uh, all the X-ray films in a large technical, uh, technological hospital is going to be one terabyte. Uh, the U.S. Library of Congress can be saved in 10 terabytes, all books there. Uh, petabytes is petabytes is one followed by uh, six, twelve, fifteen zeros. Exabytes, exabytes actually it is one followed by eighteen zeros. One of the scientists put all words ever spoken by human beings is going to take something like five exabytes. Nowadays in the literature we are talking about zettabytes, one followed by 21 zeros. It is endless. Do you know that the meaning of the word Google? Google means one followed by 100 zeros. Okay? Uh, uh, by the way, it was very nice uh, for Eid Milad Um Kulsum. They replaced the O by uh, Surat Um Kulsum. So actually, what is big data? Big data, data that exceeds the processing capacity of conventional database systems. Actually, all what we are working, till hospitals, companies, banks, this is not big data. The software and the hardware not able to manage the big data. So uh, we have differences in the structure of data. So we need database new architecture, which is completely different from the architecture of buildings. We are talking about the arch architecture of the uh, software. Uh, uh, Google actually uh, was the leading body in the world in uh, big data. They produced uh, what's called MapReduce, which is uh, software with a specific structure of hardware, how to manage such huge data. And at the end of the lecture, we are going to have a uh, amazing example how Google, Google helped healthcare system uh, in the world. Uh, so we have uh, so many challenges with big data. It is not only storage, but search, sharing, transfer, analysis, and even visualization. Uh, definitely there is a strong link between uh, big data and uh, uh, cloud both of them uh, were disruptive innovation. Still, I say that big data is a misleading name because how big is big? Big is a relative thing. What is big to one hospital maybe is not big or small to another hospital. What is big for Sabah Kamsin today maybe wouldn't be uh, big tomorrow. So still the name, they are trying to change the name, but everybody in the world since maybe five years now talking about big uh, data. Uh, uh, Google as a leading body in big data, you know, all of us, very familiar with the mission statement of Google, which is 
organizing the world's information and make it uh, universally uh, acceptable and useful. And this is exactly what they are doing for the big data. Uh, so the people of the IT here, very familiar with what's called the relational uh, database. This is, cannot be uh, effective in dealing with uh, big data. Uh, so uh, the, the main software for big data uh, map produced, developed by, uh, by Google. Then uh, Yahoo uh, made a kind of open source for uh, the big data, which is Hadoop. Uh, and this is very important because any worries regarding losing data, losing big data, this is usually will never happen while using uh, the big data. Uh, data stored on a server that goes offline uh, or dies can be automatically replicated from a non-good copy. So there is no really worries regarding losing data when, when dealing with uh, big data. What we can do with big data in cancer research? A lot. Actually, I'm going to say just a few important points. Uh, according to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, uh, they are looking for personalizing and improving cancer care care by tapping into data from millions of patients around the nation. So we are not talking mainly regarding sample size of tens or hundreds uh, in clinical trials. We are talking about analyzing uh, data for millions of uh, patients. Uh, also, it's going to help in knowing the patient prognosis uh, for medical teams to decide how aggressively to treat each cancer and what step to take after a tumor is gone. So this is very important and still I think uh, Dr. Sharif can elaborate it more uh, after my presentation. Um, even in preclinical studies, uh, it's going to help to predict which medicine or combination of medicines might be good uh, candidates to move forward into clinical trials. What big data cannot do, and this is very important perspective, take the place of well-controlled clinical trials. So actually, big data is not a kind of replacing clinical trials. It's going to be a kind of integration with clinical trials. Big data cannot make doctors, nurses, or other health providers irrelevant. You are the main assets for improving healthcare. Definitely, we need to understand the cancer biology. Big data is not going to help a lot in that. Actually, regarding big data in uh, improving management of cancer, uh, we have what's called cancer link. Uh, it is mainly for breast cancer with de-identified data from 100,000 patients. Uh, so we are going to keep privacy and confidentiality of data, and we are going to uh, analyze it uh, to reach some conclusions. What I would like to emphasize here, how Google as a main player in managing big data worked with CDC to improve health in USA. The best example was in 2009. At the time, a new f flu virus was discovered. Actually, it is a combination of bird and swine flu, and at the time named H1N1. Definitely, um, 
the world feared a terrible pandemic uh, in 2009, and they recalled the outbreak on the scale of 1918, the Spanish flu, that had infected half a billion people and killed tens of millions at that time. There was no vaccine at the time, and all their objectives as a healthcare providers, providers to slow its spread. CDC asked all doctors in the states to inform them of new flu cases. If you are going to look to the process, it's going to be minimum a week to two weeks out of date because anybody of the people is going to suffer from sickness, is going to maybe wait a few days, then after that visiting a doctor and the doctor informing the CDC. So actually the picture is a week or two out of date. So what happened? Google produced a very good solution at that time. And they published their scientific paper in Nature, where they met Dr. Zuel from Mirayu, nature or science okay dr nature they went through predicting the pattern of spread of the flu in USA what they did, you know, an average of research, uh, sorry, the average of search using Google, three billion search queries every day. Amaloui, they found that 50 million most common search terms that was people searching during previous uh, flu out spread between 2003 and two. 2008, what the people searching as patients, as people, what they are search for that. And then they compared with uh, the words used by CDC as a kind of awareness regarding uh, the flu. And they, between two se 2007 and 2008, and they found there is a common 45 search terms used by people during the spread of the uh, flu and used in the same time by the CDC. So they gave a real time feedback to the CDC about the areas that in which the flu is spreading. It was more useful, more timely. There was no asking for having uh, distributing mouse swabs or contacting physicians uh, from their uh, offices. This was a really disruptive innovation, was a completely different approach, a novel approach, how to link between big data and uh, healthcare. Uh, the same for, for big data, we are looking for treatment which will be effective for which patient? and which treatment wouldn't work. So we are not talking about average. We are not that uh, talking about the drug is effective to what extent we are going to ask ourselves a new, completely different question. For which patients is this drug effective? We have a human face actually for big data. For example, for any people working in the area of clinical trials, and you are going to say to him that there is a chance for such a drug to treat 1% of the patients, definitely such offer is going to be completely neglected. But with big data, there is the human aspect. If we can identify 
the one patient out of the 100. So we guarantee cure of such patient. So for the past 60 or so years of medical history, we have treated patients as some sort of an average. A doctor would diagnose a condition and recommend treatment based on what worked for most people as reflected in the large clinical studies. We are not accepting now average as a tool for treatment. For example, we thought that tamoxifen was roughly 80% effective for breast cancer patients. This statement is not scientifically correct. Actually, it is 100 effective, 100% 100 effective for 70 to 80% of the patient and ineffective in the rest. This is actually the cornerstone of using big data in healthcare. When we say that it is effective for 80% of patients from the perspectives of the scientists in big data, this is not completely correct. It is 100% effective for 80% of the patients and not effective for the others. Yimkin uh, the last few minutes, maybe two minutes, I would like to speak in Arabic. I would like to talk about my expectations in Sabao Hamsin. Sabao Hamsin liha dur muhammad masr kullina muhtaratin bi. Lakin in order to uh, shape its role in uh, big data, we have to answer some questions. هل نقحم نفسنا في موضوع البيج داتا ولا لا؟ ولا نراقب الموضوع؟ السؤال ده ريليتد بسؤال أقوى، هل إحنا عايزين ك57 حضراتكم ك57 عايزين تبقوا ليدرز ولا عايزين تبقوا فولوورز في المجال ده؟ بنسأل نفسنا من يمتلك الداتا اللي ب57؟ وقبل ما نجاوب على السؤال ده لازم نعرف فاكت قد تكون مؤلمة جدا more or less we have a kind of death of privacy in the digital era ده مش بس كده لو احنا قلنا احنا مش هنشتغل على البيج ديتا والديتا دي بتاعتنا ما فيش اي جارانتي ان حد تاني هياخد الديتا وهيعمل لها اناليسز وهياخد ديسيجن بناء عليها. فا اكشولي اي ثينك ان المشن اللي عرضها الدكتور شريف حطت الريسيرش كاولويه اولى في المشن ستيتمنت ل 57 شايف ان دور 57 مهم جدا في موضوع البيج ديتا والموضوع تو بيج تو بي اجنورد. ما نقدرش نقول لا احنا ما لناش دعوه خلي الاخرين يشتغلوا عليها. Uh, actually according to Forbes ماجازين وهي من المجلات اللي بتشتغل كويس في مجال البزنس على الاقل 70% من الديسيجن ميكنجز في الاي تي بيتاخد على اساس uh, البيج ديتا. Uh, رجوعا مره ثانيه لكريستنسن له كتاب شهير جدا ريليتد لكن في السب تايتل فيري انترستنج بيتكلم على when new technologies cause great firms to fail اذا احنا مش هنسبق العصر العصر هيتجاوزنا بمراحل علشان كده انا شايف ان 57 انتوا بنيتوها تو لاست ومش بس كده 57 built to lead, not to follow. Thank you very much.
كنت فاكر احساس الوحدة ممكن يقتل واللي فاكر ان الضعف ممكن يهزم